Neanderthal and Homo sapiens are hybrids. Their ancestor is the non-hybrid Amazon amarind in the Amazon forest carbon soil agroforest. 1. The quest for our origin that since Darwinism seemed like some race to proof of superiority and a declaration of the dominating modern humans being dominant because of being the fittest and consequently well deserving its dominance, allowing for unsustainable materialism and lifestyle. 2. After ancient DNA entered the scene most of what we thought to know went into scientific impasse or rather it reached almost total uncertainty or a kind of vacuum. 3. David Reich, an experienced ancient DNA scientist, now dares to come out and declare that certain scientific consensus presents very low probability. At best this more or less means that the current consensus core hypothesis is not the real or most important one. 4. Despite this, and because of the impasse, what goes on on social media sometimes looks more like dogfights with several parties of warriors, alternatively holding on to Darwinism based on random mutations, creationism, religions, younger Dryas meteorite impact, alien ancestors, or etc. One of the things going on in social media is if a. Yamnair or Aryans kind of took India, b. India developed independent of Western Eurasia, or rather, c. India took Europe and left Aryans. 5. We should remember that this particular dogfight once inspired and justified the Nazis in their quest to a world war for power and a third Reich and the systematic and despicable killing of certain minorities. 6. Unfortunately similar kinds of dogfights do seem to be far from over, and still rage or possibly rage again or as never before in social media. Also certain parties in a recent long not seen significant war related to Europe call each other Nazis and something similar is going on in the actual election campaigns in the USA. Most probably this kind of dogfights will not be over after the US elections come to a conclusion or when the mentioned European war eventually comes to an end. 7. These dogfights as pretty much all modern wars are also or largely about control over fossil fuels, power, and other strategic resources. When the US came to global power it was like the Saudi Arabia of the world, five states that actually produce most in the USA, Texas, New Mexico, North Dakota, Alaska, Colorado, until it hit peak oil around 1970. After that US peak oil, in a monopolar world the US tried to keep control of fossil fuels elsewhere in the world, just as all other poles did and still try to do, also because oil is literally power, electricity and warfare. 8. Obviously this situation of dogfights, conflicts and wars was and became even more the worst case for us humans to have a chance to a. Solve our challenges, including climate challenges, epidemics and viral and microbial breakthrough challenges as well as related AMR challenges, which all come together and feed that one perfect storm, and to b. Take care of tropical forests with their biodiversity, environment, etc. 9. Especially in the crisis and perfect storm we humans already got ourselves in, such dogfights and wars are useless or rather destructive for all parties, lead to more challenges, epidemics and climate, and bring all parties closer to extinction because they will cause an impasse in any effective action plan or even impasse in the needed efforts to develop and prepare such an action plan. 10. With access to ancient DNA, what really went on regarding our ancestrality and migrations, population turnovers events, came into our reach or rather under our nose, but it seems that nobody even dares to touch the subject together with the paradigms of consensus. 11. Most prominent ancient DNA research and specialist David Rye proved us that what we thought, consensus, a gradual evolving from primitive hunter-gatherers to agriculture and modern civilization, that include Europe and the USA or what is called the West, is not probable, but that instead of this a series of extinctions and population turnovers took place. We need to wonder why that was so and for obvious reasons also if that still could be the case. 12. What this research or David Reich does not do is clearly tell us what really went on, and so we call it a vacuum where the former consensus is in doubt but not yet clearly replaced. David Rye even warns that part of what he told will be proven wrong. In this recent vacuum, that goes on in the series Dwarkesh Patel, David Rye videos, Patel interviews geneticist David Rye, how horse nomads took over Europe 5,000 years ago and a series of other videos, we hereby in this video throw in a for most noob hypothesis and do a first check if it results in less paradigms as consensus hypothesis does. 13. We have been illustrating and proving this hypothesis in our origin for existence channel and older channels of ours for years now with the most important ancestral and migrational markers, best scientific tools, which obviously should be the preferred tools in all cases, in most cases these markers depend on DNA.
In certain enigmatic cases consensus did and does not use the essential markers at all. The most essential markers did not exist yet when Darwinism came to be. 14. We claim that our new hypothesis contrary to consensus will not throw up even one paradigm and that this consequently indicates this new hypothesis is what really happened. In the next step we will argue that the real ancestor, according to scientific ancestral markers, never got fully extinct, and contrary to modern humans was not a hybrid, and claim that the new hypothesis, still, can be thoroughly checked, double-checked and proven beyond all doubt, and without raising one paradigm. We claim that our researchers can recognize our non-hybrid ancestor modern human, Amazon Amarind, by the number of duplications and deletions, mutations, in our DNA which consequently presents the most stable and exceptional DNA, exceptional heart and brain health and seven times less degeneration, which is a kind of guarantee against extinction, Evan Eichler. Several researchers suggest that we modern humans underwent domestication, hybridization, not in the interbreeding sense. In fact some specialized researchers go as far as to argue for hybridization between gorilla, chimpanzee, and homo sapiens, similar to the hybridization between homo sapiens, or YHPQ ancestor, Neanderthal and Denisovan, with archaic ghost which we claim to be non-hybridized YHPQ modern human ancestor. There are indication that instead of further hybridizing an existing hybrid in certain recently successful cases like YHP, ARG the used human is the ancestor itself, of at least its haplogroup Q, which could imply the resulting hybrid has more stable DNA and has, at least for a substantial period of time and under the right conditions, stable DNA and stays free of epidemics. At the time of the turnover by R, R carried plague, but was not affected by it, while at the time of the Black Death R was affected by plague, a mutation in the plague bacteria had taken place in between, obviously biodiversity, around the location of production and food stocks, had become quite low already at the height of the Black Death, probably because of urbanization. Axing down of forests and or tilling and or monoculture practicing in agriculture and its consequential degradation of soils. This should be a warning for us modern humans today, action plan needed. One of the possible indications for the above claimed use of the ancestor Q for hybridization of R is the fact that even for consensus the haplogroup Q, the ancestor, and R, the invader and the one that turned over, are closely linked and the root of both, Q and R, is in the Americas, hence out of Americas. The quick North Atlantic route and gyre, around 40 days when currents are used in combination with sailing, was responsible for the speed and mass of the by David Reich detected turnover events and extinctions, especially in the case of the Atlantic facades of Europe, especially Britain that David Reich emphasizes on on occasions. Groups that do not show emphasis on the Atlantic facades of Britain and Europe, a, came in through other routes than the quick North Atlantic route and gyre and facades or b, were displaced from the facades. Other routes initially also depart from the Americas but follow more complex and longer and thus slower routes, and could involve in-between cradles with other haplogroups, but in any case are also derived and descendants from the ancestor Kug but more in the past than R. The fact that megalithic sites, similar to Stonehenge, on the Atlantic facades today are underwater indicates that the mass crossings of the North Atlantic and fleets were already going on before 12,000 BP, before the effective flood or ocean level rising which in total adds up to 120 meters. We claim that on numerous megalithic stones on the Atlantic facades of Europe, at least 4,000 BP, the fleets existing of several ships are symbolized by, or together with, what some interpreted as birds, because some similar detailed symbols, of boats, present a rudder and sails often of the square type and sometimes a cross on top of a crescent or recipient, the men and possibly women on board are symbolized by vertical lines. At times four-legged animals are shown in the same context. There is quite some emphasis on sperm whales which indicates advanced navigation and ships during crossing to Europe and back to the Americas and while organizing for coming turnovers or expansions deeper in Eurasia, out of Americas, on the Atlantic facades.